everybody, welcome back to my channel. Thank you for clicking on this video. If you are someone who enjoys talking about film, how about clicking that subscribe button? So this is day three of my unofficial 13 nights of Halloween, and today we're talking about an American werewolf in London. An American Werewolf in London is rated R. It came out in 1981. It is directed by John Landis. It is an hour and 37 minutes long. It is another horror comedy. This is the second one of my series. And you can currently find this one on HBO Max or on Amazon Prime. Honestly, going into this movie, I had absolutely no idea what I was getting myself into. The only three things that I officially knew was it was an American, he was in London, and he was going to turn into a werewolf given the title. Now, I'm going to try... Well... Never mind, it's gonna be a spoiler review. I'm gonna, I've been saying the last two uh, reviews that I was not gonna give any spoilers and I gave spoilers for everything. So just know from this point on, when I do these, they're all gonna be spoilers. We do start off the movie with Jack and David. They do get to a little small town, they get to the pub. Honestly, the people in the pub are not the friendliest bunch there. They pretty much kind of kick them out of the, the pub. I mean, not, not officially, but officially kind of kick them out. The a bartender is kind of like, You can't let them go took absolutely no time to get to the point. There was no lingering on, no like a uh, build up storytelling. It was like, we got werewolves. Honestly, you guys, within the first like 10 minutes of the movie, we got the werewolf attack. Attack? What? Where are we going? I don't know, I'll tell you when we get there. Okay, cause- oh! Oh! You really scared me, you shithead. You couldn't help me up or what? <laughs> Now, Jack did die, but David is actually the one that got scratched up and, you know, got infected by the werewolf because that's when the people in the pub actually came out. Now, between the attack and when he finally wakes up in the hospital in London, um, three weeks have actually passed. And, of course, you know, we're getting close to that full moon. Now, within this time period, David is having, like, these really, like, odd dreams. He's getting visited by his dead friend, Jack, which I'm going to go ahead and say the practical effects that are used within this movie, within his transition because every time that we see him he's always kind of like decomposing a little bit more we're honestly super super cool i mean there towards the end it does get a little bit more robotic but honestly i feel like it still holds up now before i get into more of what i really like about the movie let me go ahead and just quickly tell you guys one of the main things i did not like about the movie which was actually the romance that was incorporated within um david and the nurse who ended up falling in love with him that whole romance i really really wasn't here for it i feel like it was kind of unnecessary um to the extent that I went to there's even a sex scene that I just kind of lingered a little bit too long the movie itself is not long at all but honestly this movie could have done without that particular part to it now back to what I like about the movie which I, we're gonna go ahead and get on to the practical effects now when he actually turns into a werewolf you guys like let me just tell you I have never ever not wanted to be a werewolf like ever. Now vampire, yes. Well like if I have like a protective kind of ring, you know, like they do in Vampire Diaries or the originals or you know like, like if I'm able to, or like Blade, you know, like whatever, like if I'm able to be like out, well actually Blade is just Blade, right? That has, anyway, because I'm getting too far into it. Like the vampire transition is not as painful, but you know, every time you see a va uh, not a vampire, every time you see a werewolf that transitions, it just it's so it looks so painful like who would want that i mean i know that technically it's not really up to you i mean if you get like scratch your bed or whatever then you're kind of like that's it that that's your life now but if you're like fantasy choosing like would you choose a werewolf or would you choose a vampire let me know like, just a fun little thing i don't know werewolf like transformation just seemed very very painful and this one looked extremely painful but the way that he transformed was so so cool when this movie ended i was just like Oh, okay. I see. We're just, we're just gonna end it here. I feel like there was just so much stuff unanswered. Well, not necessarily unanswered, but I feel like even though I keep saying it could have been shorter, but now I'm saying it could have been a little bit longer to kind of explain a little bit more of the aftermath of what happened. He gets cornered within this dark alley. You see all the police coming, and then here comes the nurse. I can't remember her name, so I'm just calling her the nurse. Gets you know pretty close to him, talk about I love you, and then like werewolf David, you know, is kind of looking at her. Like I'm like, okay, maybe you're gonna switch back, maybe something, but you know, it's not really how werewolf things go unless you're like Jacob from Twilight. Uh, that werewolf transformation wasn't painful though. Ah, there goes one. There you go. Yes, I brought Twilight into this. <laughs> but uh, yeah, once he was gonna kind of basically like a. Uh, you know lunch at her all the cops who were like again at the very end of the damn uh alley start shooting nurse is in the midst middle 
of this whole thing. Talk about having a good shot. Like you really never hardly ever see that. I mean, there was a lot of gunshots coming. Nurse didn't like duck down, didn't do nothing. She's just like stood there. And I'm like, oh my God, did she die? Did she get shot? Not, you guys, not a single damn shot to that girl. Y'all know getting well. Y'all know getting well, that girl would have got shot. I'm just like, okay, so this is it. Th this is how this ends. Okay. But overall, I truly enjoyed the movie. Like, truly did. With that said, I'm going to give it a medium popcorn rating. I think it's totally worth the watch. Again, you can uh, currently stream it on HBO Max, on Amazon Prime. But if you have seen an American Werewolf in London, let me know down below what you guys thought about it. Did you like it? Did you, like it? Did you hate it? Was it just not for you? I do know that there is an American Werewolf in Paris. Unfortunately, I don't have that one incorporated within this um, mini series. Now that's all that I have for you guys today. Join me tomorrow for day four when I talk about Invasion of the Body Snatchers. Of course, before you guys click out of this video, don't forget to give it a like. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet. Don't forget to hit the notification bell so you'll be notified each time that I post something new. Yes, ma'am. A naked American man stole my balloons.